Hello, my little ghouls and goblins. I'm Taylor, but if you're a top five fan, you knew that. Now this list is big. It's full of the stuff they don't want you to know. So I had to bring in my big guns on this one, bring in some help. So I turned to one of my experts. My little freaks and creeps, please welcome Andrew to the channel. Hello. Thanks for having me on to talk all things spooky and or ooky. I'm usually over on our other channel, Top 10 Nerd, where we talk all things comic book, but I got lost in the studio and now I'm apparently making a video about Area 51. Yeah. So let's get our tin foil hats out and talk about some aliens or whatever. Number five, getting in is impossible. Area 51 didn't get a reputation as one of the most secretive places in America because it was easy to get into. And there's a reason our best idea for getting a peek inside was to just swarm the place en masse and hope that there'd be too many of us to stop. The thing is, they saw that coming. Mostly because we broadcasted it and made Facebook groups about it and it was a big meme, but as well, the entire surrounding area around Area 51 is completely surveyed. Armed soldiers patrol the perimeter at all times and they watch the airspace up above, so no dropping in Fortnite style either. Up until 2018, you couldn't even get a good look at it from satellite imagery since it was censored on Google Earth. Now some conspiracists say there's cameras hidden in the surrounding countryside in the rocks and I honestly believe that. They keep an eye on everything that goes on the main road. You want to know how seriously they take security at Area 51? Those employed at Area 51 fly in from McCarran International as there's no commuter traffic allowed. I'm guessing all the parking spaces are taken up by UFO parking. Employees fly in from a secret airline called Janet Airlines, an acronym which funnily enough stands for just another non-existent terminal. Janet may be America's most secretive airline. Anyone working it needs top level clearance. That's everybody working it. Even the flight attendants need to be cleared for top level clearance. Just in case they overhear a man in black suits talking about the Type 25 plasma pistol they recovered off the crash site of the Kig Yar Scout they found just outside of Roswell, they know not to report that to anybody. Now no word on whether or not Janet Airlines contributes to air miles, but I have to imagine their frequent flyer reward program is pretty impressive. Number four, employees are paid in cash. In 2010, some of the secrets about Area 51 were declassified and former employees were able to talk about their time at the secretive military base. One of these former employees, a 72 year old named James Nose, gave an interview about his time at Area 51 to the Seattle Times. James claimed not to have seen any UFOs or aliens, but hey, maybe that just wasn't the classified material he could talk about. The interview contains some interesting anecdotes about some US government covert ops, but what I find most interesting about the interview is his claim that several of the employees were paid in cash. He would be paid in cash and as a result, there was no paperwork connecting him to Area 51, which is probably why my landlord also insists on being paid in cash. Other employees claimed that when they were paid by check, the checks would be from unrelated non-government companies such as Pan American. So although we don't know for sure what is being done at Area 51, we know that it is so secretive that they don't even want a record of who has worked for them. Number three, they're expanding. The most secret building in the world is getting bigger, slowly but surely each year, and no one on the outside knows why. And they're doing it the way they do everything, which is to say clandestinely and not telling nobody nothing. They've been expanding the area surrounding the base, buying up swaths of land to assimilate inside of it. From what can be observed, new hangars and new runways are being built, but you know, again, it's impossible to ascertain what for because everything revolving around this building is top level clearance. So we only have wild mass guessing to go on. Obviously they're building more hangars because they're collecting more UFOs. I mean, what else could it really be? I'm a guy on a YouTube channel, I'm a trusted news source. They hit a bed of a snag in 2015 when the mass of land they were swallowing up was owned by a family who'd held the land for the past century. They refused their offers to give it up and the Air Force offered the family $5.9 million, but the family wanted to hold out for more as they felt it wasn't a good enough offer. And honestly, it's the US Air Force. We know they've got the money, spring a little for it. It's not the first time the secretive base has grown. When it was first established in 1955, it was a little over six by 10 miles. But these days, the base has become so large, it's now 4,500 square miles across. Area 51 is getting big enough to be its own state. It's bigger than Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Delaware, the three best states. I can't tell you what they're doing or what they need all that space for, but it does keep me awake wondering. Number two, there's a presidential declaration exempting them from turning over classified materials. 
In the United States, an organization can be forced to disclose classified information for a variety of reasons. As an example, if the Environmental Protection Agency believes that an organization is disposing of toxic waste in a way that goes against local hazardous laws, they can order that organization to turn over relevant materials, classified or not, in order to aid in the EPA's investigation. On September 29th, 1995, President Bill Clinton signed a presidential determination exempting Area 51 from these laws. As Clinton stated in his determination, I find that it is in the paramount interest of the United States to exempt the United States Air Force's operating location near Groom Lake, Nevada from any applicable requirement for the disclosure to unauthorized persons of classified information concerning that operating location. Therefore, pursuant to 42 U.S.C., I hereby exempt the Air Force's operating location near Groom Lake, Nevada from any federal, state, interstate, or local provision respecting control and abatement of solid waste or hazardous waste disposal that would require the disclosure of classified information concerning that operating location to any unauthorized person. This determination has to be renewed by the president every year, and we know for a fact that the next president, George W. Bush, chose to uphold and renew it, making this a rare example of bipartisanship. They cover up a lot. Now look, this whole video, we've been talking about everything they cover up, but it goes so much deeper than you know. You might think working at Area 51 would be your way in to learning all the secrets the base has to offer. You know, pick up a broom, sweep something up, learn about the aliens. But you might be saddened to know even those with top level clearance are still kept in the dark on just about everything. In the 90s, there was a bit of a controversy when several lower level Area 51 workers tried to file a suit against Area 51 because exposure to the black site's hazardous materials was making them sick. Apparently, the base would have stacks of discarded equipment, scraps, and hazardous waste left around in open trenches the size of football fields, and then to dispose of them, workers would cover them in jet fuel and light it on fire, leading to toxic smoke blowing all throughout the base. Definitely sounds very safe. This smog was affectionately nicknamed London Fog by the workers in between bouts of coughing fits. Several workers came down with skin conditions or respiratory conditions from their time working the black site. But where things get curious is that they don't even know what was being burned around them. And when the workers tried to file their lawsuit, the base refused to clarify or even acknowledge what had been burned. In fact, the government outright refused to even acknowledge the name of the base as up until 2013, they still pretended the thing didn't exist at all and were very careful in all official documentation to avoid saying the name of it ever. Did you know it wasn't even until 2013 that the base was ever officially acknowledged by a president? It was President Obama and he was doing so in a bit of a jokey manner too. The government only acknowledged the workers after their lawyer had provided them with satellite photos of the base acquired from a dubious source. Whatever was being burned there was pretty serious stuff. I mean, we can only speculate. Plasma recovered from a Type 52 troop carrier? Ectoplasm? Unobtainium? We may never know. And that's what makes me want to know. Wow, and people say that nothing interesting or at all remotely good happens in Nevada. <laughs> Any other fun facts about this government black site you think we should know? Let us know down below in the comments, and remember to like and subscribe for way more of this amazing scary content every day.